Hi everyone, I wanted to do a quick little, uh, Mrs. Hansen here, should always start with that, letting you know it's me, but I want to do a quick little video after your reading of Section 8 on polymer science just to make sure we have the same understanding of the chemistry going on with synthetic polymers. So you've read about poly uh, polymerization, where we have something called monomers, the basic building blocks of polymers, and how the C double bond C breaks, forming single bonds that leak that link the monomers and into long carbon chains. And I want to just go through the mechanism just to make sure we're envisioning the same thing happening. So for example, I have a C double bond C as this first monomer, but I want you to see something else. I want you to notice that we have an H, an H, an H, and then just something different. Let's call it element Z, just something different to keep track of. Notice each carbon has four bonds as required, and it's an alkene, a double bond. What I want you to know in terms of the um, reaction mechanism, see those electrons that are involved in the double bond? We actually cleave that bond right down the middle and let one electron go to the outside of each carbon and notice I'm drawing just a single barb. I want you to know that when you see a single barb, it is only one electron moving in this mechanism in the same, in the kind of opposite direction. If you see a double bond, a double barbed arrow, it's two electrons moving. So think of the end here of each barb representing the number of electrons. If you see a double headed arrow, it's two electrons arrowhead so it's just one electron moving and so you see this radical form a radical that would look like a carbon to carbon single bond there's the H and the Z the H and the H and then notice that you'd have a single electron outside from breaking the double bond and letting those electrons really set up an opportunity to attach to the next repeating unit. So this would do the same thing. It would form a radical. I'm gonna give myself some room down here so we can start drawing these together. C, C, we had H's on the first, an H in a Z on the second. And we've undone the double bond and formed a radical, which means you have an odd number of electrons. And that's this one lone electron makes that a radical. That's a monomer. The next monomer does the same thing. It takes that pi bond, that double bond, and it breaks it to form a radical. And as they form single bonds, you can see the radicals join to form a single covalent linkage. That single bond linking one monomer to the next. And you get thousands and thousands of these monomers building polymers, which are the fundamental building block of plastics you've learned. And so, for example, the next monomer that formed, still this repeating pattern, but it formed radicals, and you see the single bond forming that links to again one monomer to the next monomer. And the key there, in terms of why this is appearing in an alkene chapter, the monomer starts with a double bond, right? The monomer has the double bond involved, and then when it's ready to polymerize, it does so by breaking. So this, by definition, the monomer has the double bond. Monomer has a double bond. Let's make that note very much fault. The monomer contains the double bond. When it's ready to polymerize, which means attach monomer to monomer to monomer, many, many, many thousands repeating units, it will radicalize. It will break the double bond and form radicals and start linking them together in the structure that we've drawn here. 
So I wanted to just do some practices that will come up on your homework. For instance, what polymer is formed when each compound is polymerized? That's letter A. I want you to locate the double bond. So here's the double bond. And then just kind of redraw that. I have a carbon that's attached to two hydrogens. There's the monomer. I have this carbon with a methyl and this carbon with an ethyl. So this is the monomer. The monomer contains the double bond. When it's ready to polymerize, this is the mechanism. The double bond, the second bond in the double bond, will let one electron come out to each side so it has a place of attaching to the next monomer. So the first monomer now is a single bond there's its radical little electron, an odd number of electrons. This has carbon up and two carbons down. This is what we refer to as the radical, which is going to be the repeating pattern of the polymer. Draw the next monomer identical, just next to it. First carbon attached to two H's, second carbon had a methyl and an ethyl. We have electrons on the opposite sides of each carbon due to the mechanism breaking the double bond and bringing just one electron out, the site of attachment between the first monomer and the next monomer. That single bond is just attached to monomers. And it would continue. I would continue by adding the next monomer. First carbon had two H's. Next carbon had a methyl and an ethyl and then it has a linkage between the two monomers. And this just continues on and on and on. So this would represent the polymer because I've attached three monomers and I did so through radical, uh, radicals. In other words, breaking that pi bond, breaking that double bond and bringing one electron out to each. Let's try another. Locate the double bond and just redraw it. Letter B. I have a first carbon in the double bond that's attached to two H's. The next carbon in the double bond is attached to a methyl, attached to a C N group. This is the monomer. The monomer contains the double bond. Monomer. Now, it's getting ready to start polymerization. The mechanism says, I'm gonna take each one of these electrons from the double bond and bring one to each side. And that begins the process of polymerization. The first monomer will have two hydrogens, a single bond now leading to the next carbon, one up and then a CN group down. That's the monomer that's been radicalized. The next monomer just repeats. There's the first carbon in the monomer attached to two H's. The next carbon has a C and a CN. The two radical electrons, the odd number of electrons forms a site of attachment between the two monomers. And that whole process would continue. So that's what you kind of see that squiggly line representing that it just continues on and on and on. And letter C, locate the double bond. That's the heart of the reactant. Redraw it. This carbon has two H's, double bonded to a carbon that has an H, an aromatic ring, attached to a CL. Now, if you don't like that circle, that's delocalization. Let me draw that so you can see what I've done. I'll draw it cleaner. Bang, bang, bang. And then it has a chlorine coming out. Uh, so let's see, this is the monomer. The monomer has the double bond. Alrighty, it's getting ready to polymerize. I take the double bond and I separate to create a radical so that instead of a double bond, we now have a single bond. The first is still attached to two H's. The second is an H and an aromatic ring. 
with a chlorine and I have these lone odd number electrons. This is called a radical. I'll draw the next monomer identical to what I just drew. First carbon has two H's. The second carbon has an aromatic ring and a chlorine. The two lone electrons then set up a site of attachment. That's two monomers hooked together. I can continue. This would be the next monomer, draw it identical. Coming down here is that aromatic ring and a chlorine, the electrons on outside, and then there's the site of attachment. So that's three monomers long, and then this whole thing would just polymerize and continue in both directions. So that process called polymerization allowed us to draw polymers from monomers. Let's try the opposite way. What is the monomer used to form this polymer? Ask yourself, what's the repeating pattern? What do you see repeating between carbon chains? Here I'm noticing CH2, C, look up, look down, we have O, CH3, and then again, this is, this right here is identical to this right here, which is identical to this right here. Those represent three repeating molecules, which are called monomers. Now the monomer had a double bond. Locate the two carbons in the repeating pattern. The first carbon is attached to two hydrogens. The next carbon is attached to one hydrogen, and then it comes down to some other interesting things. So you can see that was the initial, I mean, this would have been the radical that the polymer was built from. And then, of course, to get the monomer, we form the double bond back, right? So, so those electrons that were being used as a site of attachment form a double bond. The monomer must have a double bond. And then you've got the building block. So C double bond C. The first is attached to two hydrogens. That's this part. The second in the monomer had an H and then just some other interesting things. This is your monomer that built this polymer. Cool. Now I'm gonna pause this video here and your last lesson awaits for you. It's called aromatic compounds. This will be the focus of benzene ring and its derivatives. We'll practice nomenclature and we'll practice chemical reactions that aromatic compounds undergo. You'll see that alkenes underwent addition reactions. We just finished practicing those. The aromatic compounds do not undergo additions, you'll see that they undergo what are called substitution reactions. So that awaits for you in the next video lesson.